Good morning to our lesson today. It is on Thursday. It is composition writing. I'm not going to repeat what I've always, say, I've, I've always said when you're writing your composition because I find out that most of you keep repeating the same mistakes. So if you haven't at least adhered to what I said, you should go back to the, uh, to the previous lessons and listen, then adhere to what I've said. You receive your composition book, kindly make sure that you read what I have commended so that you check on it the next time you're writing a composition. A composition. So in our today's composition lesson, we are going to deal about a football. We are going to to talk about the heading a football match. A football match. When it comes to a football match, this is a, like a sports day. You have vocabulary that you can use in this football match. Football match. Every composition has its own vocabulary. The thing, the good thing about having vocabulary, the, uh, good, uh, the good thing about having vocabulary that suits a certain topic is because somebody who is going to mark your work will know that you have you, you you know what you're talking about what you're talking about so if you have the correct voc vocabulary for a certain topic of a composition like let's say for example you're writing a composition about a wedding and then you know that the bridegroom is the man who is going to wed and the bride is the person is the woman who's going to wed and you know that you have page boys you know that you have the pew you know you have the exchange of vows if somebody is marking your composition they'll definitely know you know what you are talking about why because you have the correct vocabulary for that composition for that composition so here is the correct vocabulary for a football match just but a few and i'm going to try to explain how you can use them in your composition so that when you write the composition you are in a position to use them in the in your writing so number one is the referee. We all know the referee. A referee is the person in charge of a ma in charge of a match. Or we say a referee is the person who runs the game. So he, he, he like he runs inside the game or if I say he runs the game, what I mean is he's in charge, he's in charge. How are you going to use referee in your composition? You can say before one can say Jack Robinson, uh -huh, the referee blew the whistle to signal the beginning of the first half of the ma to figure out the first half of the match. Or you can say the, the player from the opponent team had stepped on my foot and by good luck the referee had seen he blew the whistle and called to warn him and called to warn him. And then you have number two, the captain. This is a player in, a player in charge of the other players. Is a player in charge of the other play, uh, other players. For example, a football match has how many players? It has 11 players. 11 players. So we have this one player who is in charge of the one player who is in charge of the what? 10 other player, 10 other players. So 10 plus 1, you get 11, 11. You can say our captain who was as fit as a fiddle passed the ball to me and made, passed the ball to me and in turn I sent it flying into the goalpost of the opponent team. Of the opponent team. So our captain is simply a player in charge of the other player, in charge of the other players. A referee is the person who runs the match, or he's in charge of the, ma of the match as it goes on. And then you have substitution. What is substitution? It's when players are interchanged in a, ma in a match. So one player, let's say number four, is, is substituted with player number, another player number four from outside, or say a midfielder is substituted with another midfielder who was not in the match. Like let's say, for example, Ahmed played the first, uh, first half of the match, and then in the second half of the match, we are having Ayub who is going to play the second half of the match. What does that mean? Ayub substituted who? Ahmed? Ayub substituted Ahmed. So that's what we call substitution when players change each other, change each other in, a ma, in a match. And you can be substituted because maybe you have, you, you have an injury or you are tired, you are tired. So you can say our player number six uh -huh, who had had his leg was substituted by our other midfi, midfielder uh, Yusuf. So you can you use substitution in your composition. I say substitution, the process of substituting. So instead of saying substitution, you can say it was substituted to make it the past te the past tense. And then you have linesmen. The linesmen help help the re help the referee in manning the game the game. We have our linesmen at each goal area. So once li let's say this is my football field. I'm having this. Let's say this is my football field, and then inside here I'm having a captain. But here I have one linesman, and another, and and, and the other goal goal area I have another linesman. Linesman. What is their work? They help the referee to do it, to man the game. Like they see mistakes that maybe the referee could not see, 
cannot see. So what can you see? And these lines may have flux, car, uh, car flux, like some sort of flux. So you are going to say the linesman raised his what? Raised his flag to signify to, to signal to the referee that the ball was out of the side or side line. If I say a side line, this line that uh, here, the line, this one is called a side line, a side line. So how are you going to do that in a combustion? Say one of the linesmen raised his flag or carry raise his flag to signal to the referee that the ball was out of play out of play or the ball was uh, the ball had crossed the side la, the side line if i say the ball is out of play i mean it is not what it is not in the field or it's not in action in action so if a ball goes out of the side line then we have what we call a throw in we have what we call a throw in are you getting that so you have what we call a throw in a throw in uh -huh. So when the ball goes out of the sideline, you have a throw in. And who, may, who sees this? The side, the, the linesman, the linesman. So the linesmen are the pe people, or these other two people, that help the referee to man them up, to man the match. And then we have the goalkeeper. Each team has a goalkeeper. For example, let's say we are having Bula F uh, let's say Bula Sagara FC playing against Garissa, Garissa FC. Garissa FC is simply Garissa Football Club and Bulasagara is Bulasagara Football Club. When you write in your composition, don't say eh, 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 Bulasagara FC. Write them in full. Why don't we use abbreviations in composition? It's for your own good as a learner, so that you can be able to come up with the correct length of a, composi a composition. And sometimes you can, write the, eh, eh, you can write the short forms of words in composition, and maybe the person marking your composition does not know the, meaning, does not know the full meaning of those, wa of those letters. That's why it's good to always come up with the correct word, with the full word, in, not the abbrevi abbreviations. So each two team has a goalkeeper. Who is a goalkeeper? The player that mans the goal area. The player that is in charge of the goal area. The player that makes sure, makes sure that their team does not get scored. Does not get scored. Or he's the person that determines the match action. If he's a good, good goalkeeper, then the, the, the opponent team, when the opponent team tries to score, he makes sure that they don't, they don't score. So each team has a goalkeeper, like we don't have one goalkeeper for a match. We have two goalkeepers, two goalkeepers. So you can say our goalkeeper who was as tall as a giraffe could not allow the player from the opponent team to score. When he shot the ball, he flew you and caught the ball in the air. In the air. So you can use that in your composition. And then what is to dodge? To dodge in a football match simply means being in a being with a, when you are with when you are with a ball and you make sure that the opponent team or the a player from the opponent team does not get the ball does not get the ball so you can say i dodged the for the captain from the opponent team and then when you dodge a person you make sure that the person does not get the ball that's simply what means dodge, dodging means the person you are with a ball and you make sure that the other person does not get the ball does not the get ball not your teammate the person from the opponent team, another player from the opponent team. So the opponent team does not get the, the ball, the ball. So what do you say? You simply say, when the ball was passed to me by our player number six, the player number, the player number seven, or you can say a player from the opponent team, tried to tackle the ball from me, but I dodged and moved forward with it, passing it to our player number, se number seven. You, you can use player number seven, you can use to my fellow player, Especially if you don't know player number seven plays well, uh -huh. if you don't know that, you simply say I pass it to uh, my fellow, to my teammate, to my teammate, who in who in turn send it flying into the goalpost of the open of the opponent team. Opponent team. What does that mean? If you send a ball flying into the goalpost of the opponent team, it means you people have scored a goal. Have scored a goal. So when you dodge, it means you are in a position, you have a ball and you are in a position to make sure that the opponent, the player from the opponent team does not get this ball. And then you have dribble. What is to dribble? To dribble a ball in football match, not in basketball, like when you bounce the ball using your hands in basketball, but to dribble in a football match is simply to be able to move with the ball using your, le using your legs, not your hands. So you say, <coughs> so when you dodge a ball, you say, I dodge the player from the Mangaza team mm -hmm. and then dribble. You dodge and then you dribble, you dribble. And I, what is to dribble? To simply move the ball with your leg, with your legs. You say I dribble and then pass it. Don't say, I, some people, some people say in composition and then I kicked it. 
and then I kicked it to our player number seven. Don't just kick it. Say I passed it to our player number. That's why it's called a pass. So you say I dribble, you dodge the ball, and then once you've dodged it, you've dodged the other player, you dribble it. So what is to dribble? To be in a position to move with the ball using your leg, using your legs. So you say I dribble the ball and then pass it to our player number eight. Who in turn, uh -huh, who in turn did what? If he scored a goal, well and good. Or if he tried to score a goal, not bad. Mm -hmm. And then you say, you have next is to, ta to tackle. What is to tackle? Like in a football match, dodge is like the opposite of tackle. Why? Because, so we said with dribbling and then we are going next to tackle. Is a vocabulary in composition. Now, what is to tackle? Like when you're writing this composition, to tackle is like the opposite of dodge. I said when you dodge, you are able to make sure that the opponent team or a player from the opponent team does not get the ball, does not get the, get the ball. You are able to move with the ball without them getting it. But when you tackle the ball, what does that mean? You take the ball from another player, another player. Not your player. You cannot tackle uh, your teammate. You tackle a person from the opposite, opposite team. So I, like, let it not happen in the combustion where you say, I tackle the ball from our player number seven. Seriously? No. If you are in the same team, you don't tackle each other. You pass the ball to each, to each other. But when you tackle a ball, you tackle it from the opposite uh, opponent team. Like I can say, our player number six, uh -huh, tackled the ball from their player number eight, number eight. He in turn passed it to me and I scored a goal. I scored a goal. So if you tackle, like in a football match, it is the opposite of dot. It's the opposite of dot. And then you have kickoff. What does kickoff in a football match? It's simply the beginning of a match. The beginning of a match. Why should you come up with kickoff? It's a phrasal verb. Yes, you are going to earn marks for that. Why? You write your combustion and say, the player, the game started at 11.20 on that fateful day, fateful day. Another player says, the game kicked off at exactly 11 what? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. The person with 11 kicked off 11 a.m. The person with started, the game started at 11 a.m. The person with kicked off gets more marks. Why? This person has used vo 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 like a phrasal verb in the, composi in the composition. There is no problem with you saying the game started at 11 a.m. But make your composition flavor. Make your composition have some flavor. Use kickoff instead of having what? Use kickoff instead of having the game started. The game started. So you can use this vocabulary in your composi in your composition. You don't understand how to use a vocabulary in the composition. I said go back. If you are watching the, the YouTube video, then you go back and just listen to how I've used it in the composite, in the composition. So that having been said, I have what we call concluding phrases in composite, in composition. Why have I come up with concluding phrases in composition? Because I was marking your compositions and as much as it has been a song, I've been singing all, all, all day long in every like video. Conclude your compositions. The concluding part of a composition always stands on its own. It doesn't matter if it is a single line or if it is a single word. It stands on its own. On its own. But what is absurd is that most of you do not even follow instruction. Follow instructions. This is what you are going to do. Once you've you've written a composition, unless it is an ending composition, unless you have been given by an ending, an ending. Why? If you've been given an ending in a composition, then you must end with that ending. You have been part of the ending part that you have been given. You have been given. But if you've been given a beginning of a composition and you're supposed to write the composition and come come up with your own conclusion. Then you can conclude, you have these phrases that you can use to conclude your composi composition. So for example, I'm writing my composition about a football match and maybe my last paragraph is going to read, when the final whistle was blown, <laughs> fans from Mangaza team jumped up in jubilation, celebrating their what? Their match awaited win, match awaited win, full stop. And then in a, in, in a different paragraph, the ending paragraph of my composition, I'm going to say, all in all, nothing can wipe that day out of my young ma, my young mind. Full stop. Or you can say the day has remained so vivid in my mind that I feel as if it were it were yesterday. It were yesterday. That is another one. I say the day is a star in my mind that will twinkle for ages, for ages.
And then you can say, the memories of that day are still caged in my heart like a bird of rare color in a zoo. In a zoo. Now, these are concluding phrases. I have given four. Why do I have four? Like there are so many concluding phrases. I'm not saying maybe you know a concluding phrase, you shouldn't use it in a composition. No, just use it, but make sure you use it corre correctly. It should be a paragraph. The concluding part of your composition is a paragraph on its own. Don't mix it up. So you can have this, there are four, you can choose one, you can choose one. The problem, the, the mistake what some of you are going to make is, now you've come to the concluding part, say when the referee sounded the final whistle to signify the end of the match, we jumped up, or you can say we jumped up in jubilation, or we, break, we, bro we broke up into a frenzied what? A frenzied celebration, for we had what? For we had won the coveted tro trophy. Now. And then you come to the last paragraph and then you say, all in all, nothing can wipe that day out of my young, ma, my young mind. So some of you are going to write all of this, the four of them, instead of writing just one, just one. All in all, nothing can wipe that day out of my young mind. The day has remained so vivid in my mind that I feel as if it were yesterday. Just use one. It's a concluding phrase, you just use one of them, use one of them. Now, when you want to write this commotion about a football match, this is what you should keep in mind. There are two sides about this. One side is you are either going to be a player, you are either going to be what? A player. Mm -hmm. You are going to be a player. Or if you aren't a player, you are a, specta a spectator. There are two sides of writing the composition. Are you a player or are you a, specta a spectator? And if I say a player, uh, like you, you, you have to be a player in a composition. You don't, you don't have, to have, to have been, to have played before. To, to be a player in a composition. No, you just choose a side. You're going to choose a side you're comfortable with. Like, are you comfortable writing a composition about a football match as a player? Are you comfortable writing the composition about a football match as a spectator? A spectator. Which side do you want? And as, like I've said previously, when you choose a side, make sure that the side you choose, you have pointers to it. And if I say pointers and me, what I mean is, do you know what you're supposed to write as a player? Do you know what you're supposed to write as a spectator? Ask yourself, how many like expressions do you know about if you're writing this composition as a spectator? How many expressions do you know if you're writing this composition as a, play, a player? Which better way? Maybe you know how to write a composition, a, a, a composition about a football match as a player and at the same time as a spectator. A spectator. No qualms. But again, ask yourself, which one are you better at? Are you better when it comes to you writing the combustion as a player? Or are you, or are you good when it comes to you writing the combustion as a spectator? A spectator. Write down whatever they keep, the, 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 write down the, the, the guiding questions that you, you, you have to use when writing the, composi the composition. You just write for it. As a player, you write. As a spectator, you write. Find out where you are good at. If your A is better than B, then go for A. If B is better than A, then, then go for, for B. Now, if you are a player, are you, if you are a player, then you are going to be in the, ma in the match, which means you are going to give yourself a number. Maybe you are the goalkeeper, maybe you are the captain, maybe you are the midfielder. Whatever you want, just choose a side. And if you are a spectator, it means chances are very high if you are a spectator, you are a fan and maybe a fan of one of the team, one of the teams. So you can choose a side if you are a spectator, which team are you a fan of? Which team are you a fan of? Are you a fan of maybe, let's say, Garissa, Garissa Football Club? Or let's say, are you a fan of, let's say, which team? Whatever. Bula, Bula, Bula Mzuri Football Club? Football Club. Choose a side. If you want to be a player, well and good. If you want to be a spectator, well and good. Just make sure that the side you choose is, you know what you you know what you're supposed to write. You know what you're supposed to write. So I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave I'm going to post the expressions that you can come up in these compositions. And then once you find the expressions, I, I, I was ho I'm hoping that when you see the expressions, then you are going to ask questions about the expressions and how to use them in the composi in the composition. You just ask me whatever you don't understand. Then, then I can say, send a voice note to you so that you are in a position to write a good composition, a good composition. And those of you who have kept writing in your compositions, come write well, shape letters well. 
I'm not going to repeat the same. Have a good day.